God, Trojan progress rules. And I look at some of these people, they show up to these meetings, Trojan shirt, which is the emblem for Johnstown, pants, shoe colors. And I look at them and I think, are you people pathetic? And they sit there and they get mad at you online because I'm a good parent, don't you trash my school? And I'm thinking, is this the best you got? Yeah, you have to laugh. It's, it's, it's so absurd that I go to the meetings five years worth. I have freedom of speech lawsuits because they shut me down, because I tell them how dirty and corrupt they are. But don't tell us that. We don't want to hear it. We're, we're great. So how does the school district, I guess, pull forward, pull ahead? I don't think it will. More money? If, say they They're going to get more money and just spend it on their friends and family and waste it. Mike Vukovic, the educational director of education, was making $150,000 he got in to be a superintendent at Indiana, the superintendent for Indiana, a top upper end performing school district, and he has to take a pay cut to be a superintendent. Right? A contract for people who should be secretaries but get five year contracts. Secretaries making 70 grand, teachers making 70 grand in the poorest city in the entire state of Pennsylvania, in the lowest performing school. First, I'd like to present this hearing under Section 780 of the School Code. Um, this is an opportunity for the community, the board, and its surrounding members to have an opportunity to share your comments on what you're about to see here tonight. This information is being shared by the administration for the first time with the board, uh, and in fact with the community. So everybody's getting this information at the same time. I say that because this process is open, this process is public, and this process will continue to be debated um, in this public setting. Um, with that said, I also want to reiterate very clearly, there will be no decision today regarding the closing of this school building. We want to work with the community, for the community, and give the community a chance to look at what we're thinking, look at the different options, and take all input into consideration. Again, I want to reiterate a couple things. One, this is part of the process. There's no decision that will be made tonight as we have a responsibility to all of you to take all the input we possibly can into consideration and looking at this terribly difficult de uh, decision facing us. We have had um, for a number of years a decrease in our overall population of our students, um, but recently we have plateaued and we have remained pretty stagnant and steady for the past few years. As of June 30th, 2016, it was audited. The current debt was about $62,700,000. And projecting with our debt service payments this year will be about $58 million at the end of the year in debt. Our fund balance uh, audited, it was around $4 million at the end of June of 2016. Uh, we're projecting to have a $4 million loss for the 16-17 year. And what I explained to you is why this has been happening is because of the increased costs that we had over those slides. Uh, this district was able to sustain it without a tax increase by using the fund balance. Uh, at the end of 1617, the fund balance will be gone. And we're facing, the, the last thing you're looking at, the operational balance. Uh, we, the, it was projected this year to, for 1617 to have about a $3.4 million loss, but the change, will, uh, the, the original budget, I'm sorry, the projection's around $4 million right now. And we're projecting now for 1718, if we make no changes right now, we're looking at about a four and a half million dollar operating deficit, which puts us ba basically at a four and a half million dollar negative fund balance. Let me be clear on a couple of things. One, the future of Johnstown's bright. We're doing great things. So even though we're here about a tough, difficult decision uh, today, let me tell you some of the great things we're doing. We're number one in the Commonwealth, the number of kids who are earning college credits while in high school. We're number one with the number of kids who are um, earning associate's degree while in high school. So we're making an economic impact in, far, in front of our kids. We are focused on the K-12 STEM program. We also focus on the arts, and I think you've seen the track record of this organization uh, that put a focus on the arts, that put a focus on being ready for college and career, that places value on the performing arts and the music arts. Uh, so the future is bright. Even though this conversation is a difficult conversation, I feel confident about the future of the Greater Johnstown School District. We have the party that's controlled by the school block, and there's no counter voice. Usually it's just Joe and I. So what do you have? 
when I exposed the commissioners for hiring their campaign manager for a six-digit job that they have to lower down to 42,000, or when they're hit with drug forfeiture lawsuits because they're illegally spending their money, or whatever the drama of the day is from ethics investigations and so forth and so on, there's no one to call these people out, so why should they be honest? They should be corrupt, because that's what people have taught them. There's no accountability. Why do you say the court system is corrupt? Cambria County has its fair share of corruption. It seems like everyone's either interconnected through family, through money, they're all one big, one big tie. Look at our magistrate, Kevin Price. He was a school board member, worked for the DA. They he endorsed was the head him. of the drug task force. He had issues with a complaint from his wife that whenever it went untouched by the DA for two years. And 13000 $13, in $13,000 that, well, the state did an audit and found that he was claiming overtime that he did not do. The state asked for their money back and the county let him keep the other overtime. Um, the drug, I mean, he was directly involved with drug forfeitures. So we have a drug epidemic in our town and our officers on the drug task force are suspects of criminal activity of themselves. And now the DA backs them for being a district magistrate. So is it, is it your district magistrate to take care of your buddies? I filed a series of right to know requests because in my very first protest of the school board in Johnstown, we protested the black money. And they all said, oh, it's fiction. There's no FBI investigation. Nothing's going on. I wanted to know how they were paying school block member Vince Securia, which he's under investigation now with the Ethics Commission. Sorry, Vince. We love you. I wanted to know how Kevin Price, who's also a school board member, who's now a magistrate, spent $25,000 in drug money. They had records for $10,000. That's right here. The records listed it actually was 25, so who knows what's true. When I filed the right to know request, I asked for all the official and unofficial audits of these accounts, and I asked for records on the DUI account, because if you remember, if you get a DUI, you pay about, oh, 10 grand in fees. What are they doing with that money? They wouldn't tell me. The audits were supposed to be done every year per state law. Uh, the commissioners, when I originally went to them and asked about all the drug forfeiture records, they didn't know there was a drug forfeiture account, people. And my question was, well, huh? And yeah, we flooded them. We wanted to know how they were paying everybody. Dear commissioners and staff, I've come today to thank you. To thank you for showing the community that you are willing not to fight for truth. You're willing to fight to hide any and all corruption that might be in our county. You're here to make sure there is plenty of smoke, plenty of mirrors, plenty of confusion, but no truth. If you know how this money is being spent, release it. We can compromise on something. We don't have to release all the informants. I don't want the informants. I want to know if there's ghost salaries. I want to know how much money is in the account. I want to know how it's being spent. Why is it not going to police officers? Why are we not hiring, buying more equipment? Why are we not hiring more police? Why are we doing things like that? So let me tell you people, it's called smoke screen and mirror. This is a smoke screen and mirror. I have told them over and over again, retract anything you want. I've cited multiple lawsuit rulings from the Supreme Court to the Commonwealth Court that says government bodies can redact information. I don't want to know the confidential informants. I've said that from day one. What I want is a detailed accounting of how this money was spent. So for example, with Kevin Price, if he has $25,000 in a year to buy drugs with, I don't care who bought it. I don't care who the confidential people are. Say on this day, I gave him 50 bucks and he spent it done. I want an accounting of it because I don't believe they have those records to account for any of it. Before the meeting, I received this report from Controller Cernic. I don't see the drug forfeiture or DUI account in here, Ed. No offense. How much money are you guys taking in? Where are the auto reports? I know right now we have an appeal fighting for your auto reports from the district attorney's office. Why don't we have this information? So when I write to know requested their audits, what I was expecting was we don't have them. Instead, we have an appeal that's a hundred some pages long saying we don't have to give them to you, which caught me off guard because I thought, what's the, what's the big cover? You don't have them, but if they don't have them, then that triggers a state investigation. The controller's office is doing the audit at the request of the commissioners. The commissioners told you that a long ago. These audits just don't happen. Uh, I've had some difficulty with this information. We will release what information we can legally when they're complete. And Chastise me because it's not in here, John. Where were you the last six years that I produced this? Okay? We, we in my office, the controller's office, have made more attempts than ever before to make information public. But we're doing our job. And 
And I believe the commissioners are doing a good job. You know, but relentless badgering of the commissioners or me, um, whether it's on Facebook, or whether it's in public meetings, doesn't produce anything. I think, I think we all have to be positive here. And then, of course, what did the county do? They hired a legal team. They spent 16000 and change with the OOR to pay Representative Brian Barbin's Harrisburg law firm to crush me. Originally, I had to do a right to know request, lost, won it on appeal, went to the DA's office, and there was a stack of papers this big. So I sat there for an afternoon, went paper by paper, and in the middle of this, I found a check for special operations fund. And I didn't know what this was because it was the middle of the document and no one knew what the special operations fund was. So yes, people accuse me of filing too many right to know requests, but when you don't give information, what are you supposed to do? So I write to know requested the special operations fund and they denied me. Plus there was rumors to be one or two other accounts. Commissioners had no knowledge of this. How can they do audits on accounts they openly admitted meetings they didn't know about? That's what I asked the county controller Ed Cernick and to the Cambria County commissioners. So after 16,000 here, another 10,000 here, they told me through a right to know they paid another 10,000 from the county and another 10,000 from the DA. And Jared, you lost. I'll beat you all those times. And when you watch this, Jared, I love you. Cause you lost twice and you're a loser. And you trashed me all those emails, all those holidays, but I love you. I love you with all my heart and I will laugh at you the rest of my life cause you're a bad attorney. Do you see this people? hundreds of pages and I responded to it. They didn't think I could. By filing these right to know requests and by digging deeper and deeper, I find out there's a special operations fund. There is a non-drug forfeiture account. No one knew about it, it was never audited. So I took an appeal to OOR and won. And now I'm awaiting the information which the county controller just served a subpoena on the district attorney because I have an appeal against him for the same information because it's this big web. Which we found out when I had some records released that they were spending it on Vera Bradley bags, $1,000 country club meals, yoga. I had to win these on appeal. Some of it was legitimate. Right here is one of the Kevin Price buy monies for 5,000. They just gave money out of this haphazardly. And when you realize some of this and you ask yourself, well, what's all the meals for? They, they were putting out $1,250 to pay someone to do an hour of yoga. I mean, come on people. This is how our drug forfeiture money is going. Um, and this was the, these are part of the records I had. And I was very critical of the meals. The meals, the yoga, um, the Vera Bradley bags. There was a huge special on Jay. See about this police meeting with the police, $70 for that. Some of it was legitimate. I'm not going to say all of it wasn't. So they did some security stuff. They did ads in the Tribune for almost $600. I get all that. But what about the rest? And you can see some of the amounts. They closed the special operations account November 18, 2014. They had 23,000 at the time. At one point, the account had up to 184,000. So where was all the money? I, I, want, I just want an honest accounting of how they're spending all this. And you could see that they, these were their records. You know, um, I had to fight to get these, so why? We asked for the drug forfeiture accounts for the city. They gave it to us in a box on an on a old school written ledger sheet, oh uh, God, handwritten. It was horribly taken care of. It had um, checks made from the district attorney to individual people with the city. The uh, city said they were going to do an audit of it. They used their auditing firm that, uh, that they pay $80,000 a year to audit the city. They also handle the contract for the school. Um, so they're, they're entwined with them quite deeply. But in the cover letter to the quote unquote audit that they did of that drug forfeiture account, it said in the letter, this is not an audit, it is just basically a collection of the data that was, they were asked to collect. So it was not an audit, but the Tribune ran with the story stating that the audit was done and there was no problems. And it's clear that there was a discrepancy. And they wrote us out of the story. And they wrote us out of the us. story. But yeah, they keep us out of it. And they also said the audit was all clear, which it said that it wasn't on an audit.
if they can't find the people in Johnstown guilty for this, then I have no faith in them at all. And they're, they're another useless bureaucracy. If they do their job, they'll put these people away, either jail or fines or whatever, to make sure that they no longer can do what they do, and they send a message that no one else can, so that we can get people on a school board who are worried about educating kids not getting their kids' jobs as teachers. And if they do that, then you'll see a school succeed. You'll see people wanting to live in the city that come here because they'll be, they'll be okay sending their kids to a school district that are not afraid of the problems and the poor education. And you'll see housing prices go up. You'll see people coming in. I don't blame it all on the school. That's just a component. I mean, the city people are doing the problems are, are a problem too. Watch, uh, what's that, HGTV or whatever, and the people going around house hunting. How's the school district? Well, lucky you, it's the bottom 15% of the state. Would you like to buy the house? No. John D. Bartola, 1197 Bedford Street. I'm one of your constituents and I'm probably your loudest critic. My grandmother went to this school. My mother went to this school. I don't want you to close it. Silence, none of you spoke out when they asked if you had questions. I saw your presentation, saves one to $1.5 million. I'll tell you how you do it. Eliminate most of your administration, gone. That'll probably save you more than $1 million. Talk to your teachers, you did not address. You're gonna fire them? What about all the other workers in this building? What about all the other services? Where are these employees gonna go in a town that's struggling? You have to address this issue. Where will they go? Talk to them. Perhaps they're willing to accept a 10% reduction in salary to keep their jobs and not be on the welfare lines. And yes, you have spent over a million dollars in renovations. I sat through your workshops to build the middle school, all the work you were gonna do, and the total about face. My next question to you is, what happens to this building? Because I think you've made up your minds to sell it. Which of your family members are gonna open up a senior apartment complex? What's gonna to happen to the children in this district? What's gonna to happen to the, yes, Mr. Curry, you should be laughing. Maybe you should, because I want to know what's going to happen to this property that belongs to the taxpayers, not to the board. But you're laughing. Why is that funny to you? Why does it make no sense? If you're going to sell this building and laugh at me, is my time up? My thoughts is I think it's a mistake to close the middle school. And if you're going to sell this school, who are you going to sell it to? How much are you going to sell it for? What are you going to do with the money? And if you're going to laugh at a constituent who's asking what the sale is and the plan for the sale of this building, you need to answer to us what you're doing with this money. Instead of creating expensive jobs that you don't fill, director of education, director of student services, cut the positions, keep our children intact, and keep this school district sound. And please respond to us tonight, because I am not happy at being laughed at again for the third year in a row. Thank you very much. And the voters will be deciding your fate the ballots. I'm not being negative enough, people. I started 20 years ago writing what I was called the Agony Ant column. I had a very good friend who was like a mother to me named Honor Church. If you Google her, she died a couple years ago. She was a world-renowned psychic. And one day when she was doing a reading for me over the phone, Honor said, I see you, honey, writing a column called Agony Ant. And she told me, and I laughed at her, because when I started writing my columns, I took that name and became the Agony Ant writer for the Gay Life Newsletter. And I write in poetic verse, I make fun of politicians. If you've seen these columns in the Gay Life Newsletter or on Facebook, I post outrageous posters making fun of people on a level that cannot even be seen. And I do it with a laugh in my heart and a song as I sing, I could give a shit less what they think about it. Then I see these people at the meetings and they get all bustered and angry and I laugh at them and tell them to have a sense of humor. And when you tell me that, oh, I'm being too negative, guess what, I trash myself more than anybody. Three years ago, my detractors decided to call me Queen John. They put posters of me up to make fun of me. You think I got upset? I shared them all over Facebook. I loved it. They quit doing it. I'm so disappointed. Bring back the trash. I want a billboard, people. Huge ads, Queen John. But they don't do it anymore. I'm always hoping that it's a victory and people do what's right. But we're in the country of Cambria and things are however they do it here. It's not the real world here. And, and it doesn't play by the same book and they do what they feel like. So and I'm not, I'm hopeful, but the optimism of people doing what's right here, 
is, is slim to none because they've done whatever was right for them for so long. But again, uh, when we talk about look, transparency, two-way communication, it's important to hear from you. We will present our scenarios um, in the April town hall meetings. We'll gather your input, but we need your input to talk about what you think works best for this district. This won't be a decision that will be made in isolation. We are responsible to collect information and data and present that to the board, and that's why you're here tonight, to hear from all of us and you. You will have time again over the next two months to come see me personally or attend the town hall meetings and offer your input, because it's valid and it's important to us to take everything into consideration.